trust anyone. There's no kindness left in this world. Just savages who survive by stealing and killing. Hello, I'm Sophia Jessica, and welcome to the Fan Carpet. Welcome, Luke. Uh, it's a pleasure to speak to you. How, you. how have you been? Thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, really well, thanks. Good. Um, I'm quite enjoying uh, uh, working from home, all that kind of stuff. It's uh, quite good being, but trying to be as creative as possible, you know, all that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, it's good, it's good. How about you? Are you? Yeah, well, I've been working from home since 2009, since I was mid-redundant, so I didn't have to get used to that bit. Uh, what I'm finding difficult is not being able to see my girlfriend, but yeah, because you know, yeah, because uh, yeah. like the travel ban and everything. But there you go. Um, but I'll see her see her before too long, I'm sure. Um, all right, shall we get into this? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. All right. So if we go back to the beginning, uh, was there a defining moment for you to get into the industry? Um, it's a funny one. I um I did a little bit as a kid. Um, uh, like I did a, a couple of commercials and things and, and sort of I loved it as a kid and then uh, for some reason I, I stopped um, when I was probably about 11 or 12 um, but I, originally, I initially got into it because I wanted to be James Bond that was the big thing uh, I watched James Bond as a kid and just thought it was the coolest thing ever and decided I wanted to be like that um, but um, yeah I stopped and then uh, it was only sort of after finishing sort of GCSEs and things that I was like what am I actually what can I do with my life? And uh, I decided that you know, if you only get one chance, you may as well do the thing that you um, you love doing. So yeah, just kind of yeah, it was a, a long process of deciding this was the right thing to do. Um, and I was lucky that my parents didn't mind me taking that gamble. Um, they were very much like, you know, if you only live once, you may as well give it a go. You know? um, so no, I had a yeah, it was quite an ease sort of ease into it um, in that decision. Um, but I've always loved uh, sort of live theatre and, and watching movies. Um, I used to watch TV all day as a kid. I used to learn all of the, the, the lines and then would speak along with the films and all that kind of thing. Um, so it's always sort of been my focus as such, even when I, I didn't really realise it. And then, yeah, stopping doing it for a few years was the worst thing. <laughs> awesome. Um, all right, so who's your James Bond then? Who's my James Bond? So, um, Good question. Uh, so uh, originally it was uh, the first one I ever saw was GoldenEye. So originally it was Pierce Brosnan. Um, and then I sort of opened out to uh, Sean Connery and Roger Moore. and was a bit like, uh, you know, Sean Connery's got that thing, but then Roger Moore. Um, I've got to be honest, though, I think Daniel Craig's nailing it at the moment. I think he's kind of amalgamated all of them. Um, you know, arguably Timothy Dalton uh, is closest to the uh, original book. Um, you know, but um, I'd say that, uh, yeah, probably Daniel Craig's smashing it. At the moment. It's going to be sad to see him go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, Edge of Extinction, um, aka The Brink, is about to be released. Uh, what can you tell me about your character and where you fit into the story? So, um, I play the boy um, who is unnamed. Um, and it's sort of, I kind of see the film as uh, it's almost like you see it from his eyes as such. You know, you it's his life that kind of leads. To uh, seeing the expanded universe, seeing everybody else in the world, seeing um, how other people live, um, and like because initially it was a, a short film. Um, when we first uh, started looking at it, it was a sort of fifteen, twenty page uh, short, um, and it was the the whole idea was the, the first time that he makes contact with another human being, um, and it kind of developed from that. And I think that. As a character, you, you kind of he, he he's sort of yeah he's kind of the driving force as such. You you know, other, however he kind of falls into everybody else's actions. If you know what I mean, and and you see it from his perspective. And um, yeah, I kind of think, I kind of I, I kind of feel like yeah, you kind of follow his journey as such, um, which then branches out. Um, but yeah, he's an interesting, uh, interesting guy. Great, um, and obviously with, with the post-apocalyptic setting, what was the atmosphere like on set? Uh, it was great. I loved it. Um, it was a really nice group of people to work with, and um, something post-apocalyptic. It was always very uh, upbeat, very fun. People, you know, constant jokes. Um, it was very relaxed in that sense. Um, and I think it it was. 
yeah, it, it was, it's, it's always interesting when you work on a, a set that's about something so dark and, or, um, you know, just about, you know, the end of the world. Um, but it's still being a, a lot of fun. And I think that because of that, it, it, it made it easier to work with people and to, to kind of go into those sort of big fight scenes and um, the sort of, you know, yelling in each other's faces and all that kind of stuff. It kind of makes that a lot easier and a lot more free because you know that they're not going to see it. It's, I don't know. It, it's just a very easygoing uh, path and through. Um, and I think you know, Andy and Julian did a really good job um, getting the people they did together um, and also getting that camaraderie um, right, which which is a very hard thing to do. And I think, yeah, I think we all gelled quite well and it was a lovely atmosphere. Um, I'm not just saying that. No, it genuinely was. And they're all you know great people to work with. Um, do you have any memorable moments that will stick with you for the rest of your career? There's a lot. Because we, we went, we, we did, I, I think it's been like, 27 locations or something we, we went to so many different places and um so many different environments and like the whole um the whole of the last sort of uh the, the big fight when they come to the the house um where, where the family are um there's that that was all shot on a uh, like a, a big paintballing uh no, airsoft sorry um uh wood area i don't know what you'd call it um but it it was constantly muddy and it was constantly like um you're just dredged like you, making the film when you were shooting the scene you really did feel the the toughness of it the you know we were we were fighting in the mud we were we were fighting slipping over you know swinging like our weapons around and someone would slip over because they, they'd catch their foot wrong on a slip of, you know a stone or something and it, it was I think the grittiness of the experience is, is, is what will stick with me. And, and it was either really, really cold or really, really hot. There was never kind of any in between. Because, um, like, we, we filmed um, when we first started filming, um, it was sort of peak winter in December. Um, and it was freezing. Like, like the, the amount of clothes we were wearing did nothing to kind of um, help that. And we, yeah, it, it was freezing. And then, uh, when we then picked up filming again, we had to, because of the way that we worked, we had to keep taking quite long breaks. Um, and, um, yeah, we would come back in the summer and then we'd all have to keep on all of that winter wear. Um, and I remember there's a scene um, where I'm running through this sort of big concrete area um, being followed by a drone. And um, it, I think that was the hottest day of the year. And ev after every single take, I had to strip down walk back to reset and then not until we were ready to take we then get all our stuff back on and then go again but it was uh yeah i think the grueling sort of uh the weather and, and all those sorts of things it, it, yeah it feel me it was as gritty as it as it looks it, it, you know those environments are very much real um which is great and you know eating sort of i'm very much one of those people that if you if they say you know do you want to we, we want you to eat from this can of spam or we want you to eat, 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 eat some oats, but you know, you've know you not got no milk, can't heat it up, so do it, you know. <laughs> so so it, was, it was good. Everyone everyone very much got their head into it and, and you know, went along with everything. So it was great. That's awesome. Did you enjoy it? Did you enjoy the stunt aspect? The, the stunt? Yeah, doing the yeah. stunts. Did you yeah, enjoy doing was, those? Um, yeah, a lot actually. And, uh, so uh, Chris, um, who plays the man, he he uh, choreographed a lot of it, and I thought he did a cracking job. Um, and you always kind of, even even through all the the mud and the falling over, all that kind of stuff, you you always felt safe. Everyone was always controlled, um, and I, it was good because I mean Georgie as well is is you know highly qualified um, it, um, with all the combat stuff, and it was nice working with a group of people that knew what they were doing. And, you know, Chris was always there on hand to say, right, let's, you know, and we would break it all down and then it would just be a case of just going for it. And um, because of the kind of people we were working with, everyone kind of felt confident enough that, um, yeah, that, that they would come, come come out well. And I think they did. I think I think they looked great. And all kudos to Chris for putting those things together, I think. Wonderful. All right. So, um What's your preferred genre? And do you have any favourite films? Um, my preferred genre, I, I'm one of those people that watch literally anything. 
Um, I will, I will, if a film has got a, you know, if, if you tell me it's the worst thing I've made, I'll watch it. Um, I, I love drama. I love, um, I like things that are a bit weird. Um, I watched this, uh, it's really great film a few weeks ago on Netflix. Uh, I can remember, you know, it's, uh, it's called, um, it's not, I don't really belong in this world anymore. I, mean, I can't remember the part of it now, but, uh, it was, it's wacky. It's got, um, like Elijah Wooden who plays this crazy guy, like nerdy guy who's really good with, with uh, like throw, like throwing those little ninja stars. And it, it's wacky, but I love stuff like that. Um, always up my street, but in terms of, uh, I think, my favourite film is probably Gladiator. Um, I just think it's a big film. It's just, I can watch that film over and over again. Um, and the you know the the way it looks um, and that whole last scene of Walking Phoenix and uh, uh, oh, yeah, it's terrible. Um, Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe. Um, you know when he uh, oh, it's yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's probably my all-time favourite. Um, sure. All right. Um, uh, obviously, um, you're you're kind of kind of uh, new, like not new to the industry, but like you're at the uh, at the early stages of your yeah. of your career. Do you have any other aspect uh, aspects of the film industry that you'd like to um, pursue? Yeah, I mean, I've always been a really keen writer, um, and so I, I, I still I, I I write a lot, um, and I'd also like to dabble at directing. Um, that's something I always. I've always really enjoyed. Uh, as a kid, we used to make little films. Uh, we used to make spoofs of horror films as kids with our with our phones, and uh, I used to always direct those. And we used to kind of um, go to each other's houses and just shoot these awful uh, little sort of ten minute videos that would be filmed on our little, you know, the old sort of uh, just when camera phones came into existence. Um, uh, so yeah, that writing and directing is something that I particularly am interested in in experimenting with. I mean. When I was at drama school, we I put on a play um, that I'd, I'd written and directed. And I was doing, uh, um, but it was uh, and that, that again. That was one of the best experiences ever. And uh, I'm looking to kind of branch more into that at the moment um, and to get more experience on that front as well. Um, but yeah, those are kind of the core things that I've had. So you so you're using this time in quarantine to like to write and. To, to, uh, to stay as creative as possible. Yeah, pretty much. Um, that's pretty much what I've been spending all my time doing is, uh, is writing. I'm, I'm also, I'm, I'm one of those people that um, I'm also I'm writing, a, I've started writing a couple of novels as well, just because there's one that I've been working on sort of like three, four years, and that's kind of nice to get back to that, um, carry on with that. And then also uh, another one that I've started. I, I just love, I think my favorite thing is just the generating of ideas and just seeing where things go. Um, because when you, when you know, when you're, when you're working on your own thing, it can go wherever you want it to go. You know, it's your imagination is, is your only limit. And um, yeah, I, I, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. So, um, Uh, so you've worked with a great crop of talent on, like on this film alone. Um, do you have like a wish list of who you'd like to work with? Um, I do. I do have a, I, I have a lot of people. <laughs> um, I think in terms of sort of like directors I'd like to work with, um, Chris Nolan, I'd uh, love to work with him. Um, Greta Ger Gerwig. Uh, Gerwig. Gerwig. Um, yeah, Gerwig. Yeah, um, I really like how human her films are, uh, like Lady Bird, you know, that relationship between their mother and daughter, you see that in everyday life, you know, my sister and my mum, and every, everyone's got, you know, and I think that, I think, well, you know, any actor wants to be in something that really does capture life as it is right now, and I think that she's very much creating work like that at the moment. Um, in terms of other actors, I mean, there's, you know, um, people like what I Phoenix, I want to work with someone that's just, Full 100% out there, you know what I mean? Like, that goes to those places. Um, and Killian Murphy, 100%. Uh, I would kill for a scene in Peaky Blinders. Be insane. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, well, it's a great show, it's, uh, and it's very popular, and it's been mm. going for a while, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I think it's, uh, it's just, it captures that kind of the art of 
of it, I think. And I think that um, as kind of more things are being produced, things are the things that are, are treating every aspect as just as important as the other. But it's just you know the artistry of it. That is, I'd say Peaky Blinders is a piece of art. You know, it's the way you know slow mo's are. The, just the symmetry of the, the street scenes, it's all just like, you know, I mean, I'd say, that, you know, when you think of Peaky Blinders, one of the scenes that I always think about it are it, sort of stationary camera, row of houses either side, horses walking down the street. It's just a perfect shot and it just looks beautiful. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's it Stephen Knight, isn't it? But, yeah, it is. Yeah, Stephen and I. We had the we've yeah. had the pleasure of speaking to him a few times. We were actually at the premiere for one of the series of um, Peaky Blinders. Um, I think it was season three that we did the premiere for. Uh, it was up in Birmingham. It, I I didn't do it because I'm I'm in London. Uh, I've got a Birmingham team, so they went and done it. Um, but yeah, Stephen was there. Uh, Killian was there. Uh, Tom Tom Hardy was there. I think that was the season that he came, first came into it. Uh, so, so yeah, it, was, uh, it 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 looks really cool. Um, I haven't caught as much of it as I'd like, but yeah, it, mm. it, uh, it's one of those one of those series that I do want to get into. Yeah, well worth the time. I think it's uh, as well like just the, the journey of, of Tom Shelby is uh, it's intense. And it's uh, yeah, even just for that experience of seeing his kind of descent into. You know, whatever yeah yeah well, i will definitely watch that um yeah i think it's on netflix now as well <laughs> as well as, i think it's on iplayer still yeah I, I, yeah i think it might be or yeah i ended up um my, my partner hadn't seen the last series um and so i just went out and bought the dvd because like we're not waiting a year you've got to watch it <laughs> so uh, yeah yeah, why not? Absolutely. Um, so, who inspires you in the industry? Inspires me. Um, it's a difficult question because I think everyone, the people you look up to, uh, it, it's all in different ways. It's all in different sort of like. I think the, the people that really inspire me are the ones that have kind of been at it for years. Um, that, that have that sort of longevity in their careers um you know people like Ian McCann who've been at it since forever um you know that that would be you know the the footsteps I want to follow in uh people like him Patrick Stewart the the old school people Tom Hanks like you know those, those people that's finally they've just they've been at it for so long and they always make quality work um and I think that's important to people like that that have grafted and grafted and grafted um I think, you know, the only way you can back yourself is to, to look at those people and say that they, you know, they, they never let up. They never kind of, you know, take a thought ahead of um, Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we had the pleasure, of, uh, we've spoken to him a couple of times, but um, we had the pleasure of, uh, of speaking to uh, Sir Patrick Stewart at the Picard premiere. Oh, wow. Um, uh, at, the, uh, at the start of this year. Uh, it feels like a while ago, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, at the beginning of the at the beginning of the year, we were at the premiere for Picard, so that was fun. Right. Um, I've, we've spoken to him at um, uh, Blaken on the film, um, the kid who would be king. Oh yeah, because um, yeah, yeah. he plays Merlin. In that uh, we uh, we spoke to him for that. Um, so yeah, he's a great guy. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, great guy. He's, he's t so talented. Um, yeah. I think he got on my radar probably with Star Trek, but no, no, actually, probably do actually. Okay, I think the okay. thing is as well with with Patrick Stewart is that he's and Ian McKellen as well. They're not afraid to make themselves look stupid, and I think mm -hmm. a lot of this industry, uh, you know, is fueled on ego. And I think that one of the great things that they they've done um, and that's a good reminder to young actors um, is that it's okay to do something that takes the piss out of yourself because that's that's you know as soon as you take yourself too seriously it starts to kind of get on top of you a little bit and i think um their their episodes of extras where they just you know it, it's perfect it, yeah um that's what, another thing as well that's by the way their ability to you know to be ridiculous when they want to be yeah absolutely and not and not not afraid to 
not afraid to look ugly on screen. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that as well. That's a that's a great note for any actor that's uh, you know trying to make it work. Is is there to look ridiculous because it's only by going too far that you learn where those limitations are and, and where you need to hold it back and where you know where that placement is. And I think that that's um, yeah, that's a, a key. Absolutely. Um, so other than James Bond, because uh, I'm sure that's a dream role. Uh, yeah. What would be your dream role? Um, my dream role, um, it's a hard one. Um, I've always wanted to play, um, like a proper sort of just like stereotypical English villain. Okay. Um, I'm, you know, like, but like, obviously, you know, some misunderstood villain, that kind of thing. Um, I love the whole kind of like, I love the psychology of it. Um, and I, and I think that it's, I think they're just exciting role to play. Um, I did, um, and I know he's not really a villain, but he kind of, um, he sort of, he is, he is the villain of the piece, but I, you know, I understand where it's coming from. He's the villain in the main character's life. But um, I played uh, the parking in the Cherry Orchard at drama school, and I've never had so much fun with the character because everything he does, you, you, you completely understand why he's doing it and where he's coming from and, um, his love for, for Lubov and it just, yeah, just, I'd want to play characters like that all day every day. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, well, that, that's the thing with a villain role. You, you can't play them as a villain. That they, 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 You have to have to find the humanity and, yeah. and no villain thinks they're the villain. So, no. which is yeah. which I think is always interesting because yeah. uh, they could be doing the worst possible things, but they don't see themselves as the villain. They see themselves as doing it for the greater good. I see, and it's, it's similar, like with with the parking. He he did it. You know, I mean, I tell him he did it now to get strong, but you know, he did it because he felt like he deserved deserved it. You know, he his his family um, they're, they're from a, a poor background, and they they worked their whole life for this other family, and then. It got to the point where actually I, I can afford to buy this now, so why wouldn't I? And I'm going to destroy it and I'm going to build something new. You know, it, it's a kind of a necessity for him, I think. And and I think that that's what makes him interesting. And like you say, you know, all villains have a have a drive and a, and a reason and a belief that mm. this is the right thing to do. You know, um, whether that's you know um, wrong, you know, a, a wrong belief that's just, you know. Uh, been, you know, where the, the person has been guided wrongly in their life or whatever, that, you know, it's by uh, the by, but yeah. yeah. Mm. All right, so fandoms are a big part of the industry. Who or what are you a fan of? Um, I'm a massive author fan, both UK and uh, US. Uh, okay. I watch them on repeat regularly. <laughs> cool. All right, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, there's uh, uh, John Krasinski with his uh, some good some good news show. Yeah. On see the YouTube. wedding. He's... Sorry, they did a wedding. Um, did yeah, a wedding. I saw that one. Yeah, I saw that. It's it's so cute. Uh, he's done uh, various uh, various office uh, reunions on there because uh, I think uh, what is it? It's an, it was it twenty fifth anniversary or something. Yeah, or yeah, fifteen yeah. years, something like that. Um, so he's had Steve Carell on there. He's at, um, I mean, even Kimmel had um, had like Steve Carell on on his show. Um, I think uh, I, I haven't seen the uh, the I haven't seen the American version. Um, I've seen some of the English version, but I'd like to. But yeah, I, I definitely need to need to yeah. watch those like yeah. fully. <laughs> you you fall in love with the characters. Like it, it's uh, you know I I very much uh, wept when it ended. <laughs> so I was over there. <laughs> Um, it's, yeah, it's really good, really worth watching. Very funny as well. Um, and Steve Carell. Have you seen um, the trailer for Spaceballs? Uh, no, I haven't seen the trailer. I know it's coming. I haven't had a chance to watch it because we have covered it on site uh, on the fan cup. We covered it, uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing that when yeah. it comes out. Yeah, I think it's, uh, they were so quick on it as well. Like they must yeah. have like, as soon as it was, as soon as uh, yeah, that came into a yeah. Um, well, I mean, I, I'm guessing a lot of this stuff would have been shot, and it's just a case of that it's in post production, and like it's already done, it's already in the can. Because yeah, no, I mean, like, um, like when they first announced you know, when the US announced they were going to do a great space force, like 
in reality, and, and they were so quick to go right with we're, we're making the show. <laughs> yeah, it's massive. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be good because you got you've got a lot of comedy legends in there, even yeah. Lisa Kudrow, Steve Carell. It's gonna be incredible. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that Netflix and and with the Netflix uh, model, uh, it's going to be a binge. So it's uh, so get get ready to lose like four. Get ready to like to be watching for like six hours or <laughs> or however long it takes to watch it, whether it's a half hour show or an, or an hour show. It'd be great. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, on that note, um, is there is there a book uh, that you're a fan of that hasn't been adapted to film or TV on Netflix yet that you'd like to be a part of? Um, so I'm reading, uh, at the moment I'm reading this fantasy series um, called First Law um, by a guy called Joe Aber Abercrombie. Abercrombie. Um, and it's a kind of, yeah, I feel like it's, he's like a, like, I think he's probably the best modern day fantasy author out there at the moment. Um, and the first book, The Blade itself, is so good, so good. Uh, I read it so so quickly. Um, I'd love to see that um, straight into the show. I think it would be really good. And there's so many different characters and so many interesting kind of through lines. And, and I mean, I'm not, I'm finished the trilogy yet, but um, it seems like it's, yeah, going crazy places. Um, I'd love to see that. It's all about politics and kind of thing and it's uh yeah Love to do okay. that. cool um uh, and with the popularity of streaming services like netflix and new disney plus uh what do you think the future of cinema is i think um i think the thing with all these things i very much feel like everything goes full circle and i think that at the moment it's you know if we if we leave COVID out of this um I think people are more and more becoming more and more engaged in a lot more indie cinema, a lot more, you know, stories that Hollywood and big budget studios aren't telling. And, and I think that that's, that's the key um, to, to the film industry at the moment. I think people with Netflix people and, 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 you know, other streaming platforms, um, people are taking more gambles with the, the shows that are being created. And I think because of that, the viewers are what, taking more gambles with the kind of films they want to see. And they're, you know, they're, they're seeing a film they've never heard of by a director they've never heard of with an actor they've never seen before. And they're going, ah, I've got two hours, I'll, I'll give it a watch. Um, and I think that that's, uh, that's the key is, is indie film. Um, I, I, I really do think that more, more and more people are seeing those. Um, and I don't think, I don't think cinema is going to be a, a dead thing. I really don't. I, I, I think that people are, people love watching things in their home, but I think, nothing will equate to sitting in a, a dark room with a massive screen um in front of you and i think that's you know that's why we're all into it really and um, the people working in it um is because of for that feeling and i think that as an audience member i think that's what they people will go back to i think i think it's very much uh, i think we're, i think it's going to boom again and i think i know it's probably going to be more difficult now with, with covid and i think that the next couple of years i think cinemas will uh, be quieter, um, but I don't think I think I think it's bright. I think I, I do think that we're going to see another film boom. I think people are going it, to. It, it's one of those weird things. Like um, cinema was massive, and then in the in sort of the late nineties, early two thousands, you had like six feet under come out, which was kind of the first sort of really long serial drama with uh, you know big character arcs, and people loved it. People got into it, and you had some fun, all those sorts of things, and then that kind of died out a bit. And then people went back to the cinema, started watching films again, and then um, then they, we, we then got back to series. And series are now getting shorter and shorter. And people want to binge it in three hours. You know, when you look at um, End of the Fucking World, it, it, it's twenty minute episodes, and people binge it in in a couple of hours. And I think that the next step is that people will go, "Oh, I just want to watch something. I don't, I don't want it to be split. I just want to watch it in in one sitting." And I think that that's where film will then boom again. And then I think I do think it will then flip over again, but I think it's a bit too good. Um, I've gone awesome. Yeah, but, um, yeah oh, awesome. Um, we've seen a boom over in America uh, with drive-ins coming back. So oh, that might okay. be, that, that might really be really okay. cool. that, might, that might be something. I, I don't drive, so, um, drive, yeah. so, yeah, we'll, so we'll see. But yeah, drive-ins could, could make, could make a resurgence even yeah. over, over here. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you, Luke. Um, I wish you all the best with everything. And um, yeah, Age of, uh, Edge, of, Edge of Extinction is out soon. Um, I think it's out next week. Yeah, um, I think so, I believe. Yeah. Uh, what are you hoping the audience is going to take away from it? Um, I, I hope they just have a good time watching it, to be honest. Um, enjoy the journey. Um, enjoy the grittiness. Uh, and I just, yeah, I, I, I just hope people enjoy it. And that's the key, isn't it? If you're, people aren't enjoying it, what's the point, you know? Mm, absolutely. <laughs> um, all right. Well, you enjoy the rest of your day. And thank you so yeah, much for taking the time to speak to me. Appreciate take it. Care. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks again. You too. Take care. Bye. Thank you for watching The Fan Carpet. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for more content next time. We need each other. the largest of the Balearic Islands, Mallorca. With the turquoise waters of the Mediterranean Sea, beautiful mountainous landscape, the thriving city of Palma, quaint little market towns, a growing number of luxury hotels. It's no surprise that the likes of Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor like to holiday here. So come and join me as I take you round Mallorca. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.